Hi, thanks for joining me on Wilderness with Imani. I'm at Stampede Reservoir and I'm at the dam and I meant to come here last year but I never made it up because of snow on the road or this or that. But it's cold and the lake is really high but it looks like it could be a really good day of fishing. There's some nice fish in this lake. So I usually fish under the under the dam parking area but the water's high and there's really nowhere to really relax. This bank over here, it looks like it's got some good possibilities for number one priority catching fish. Number two priority have some kind of area to relax and not just be on jagged rocks all day. So obviously you can't park on the dam. Come up a way, so I gotta walk down there and get set up. I'm just gonna be soaking some bait today, chilling, but I do have some lures on me that might come into play depending on how the day goes. But for now, let's grab the gear, let's hike down there, and let's see if we can't get some rainbows to eat. It's a little bit of a walk, but it's not too bad. I'm just walking on a road. This isn't my first choice, but I'm thinking I'm going to walk on these rocks until I find a spot with a relatively flat rock where if I want to do some hardcore lounging, I can. I already walked like a quarter of the way out on the dam because I thought this was too steep, but this isn't that bad at all. This seems to be okay. So, I'm gonna post up right here. There's a little foot under this heavy stuff that I can stand on. This ground is so hard, I can't even get my rod holders into it, so I'm going to have to uh, build a little... I'm gonna have to build this little fortress of rocks, this tower of rocks. And that'll give me a good secure rod set, especially if I'm napping. So I'm all set. Uh, the camera's in the one spot it can be, so I hope this shot's okay. <laughs> it's really deep. And I'm using long leaders. I got a five foot leader on my night crawler, inflated crawler. And I got about a four and a half foot leader that was just left over from before on my power bait. I tossed the power bait out. It sank like a 37 count with a quarter ounce sinker. The night crawler, I threw it 15 feet offshore, 23 count. But with the five foot leader, that's going to compensate. This time of year, you only need like a 10 to 20 count tops. And you could probably get fish shallower than that. The water is so cold. But I figure it's going to be a long day. I'll go ahead and leave that deep count that's almost down to 40 and see what it does. If you want details on how I rig up, go to my fishing tips playlist, rigging up for reservoir trout or my strategy for deep water reservoir trout videos will tell you exactly how I set up for bait fishing. I was surprised the lake's so high. Boca is like bone dry. It's really low. And I guess they're just getting ready for all the snow melt. Because the snow's melting around at this level, but up in the high country, there's tons of snow that still has to melt. I'd like to see if I can get some a kokanee. I've, this is like one of the few places I've hooked a couple kokanee from shore. And I actually have a clip on my Lakes and Reservoirs fishing playlist where I take my boat into a, a boat ramp in the back. And I was looking around, and there, I kept seeing these things swimming by. It was like a mass school of kokanee salmon that were confused because they were all in spawning mode. I was using a tube jig, and I was just catching one after another. And I didn't keep any of them. I could have ate them, and I just, I'm so disappointed. So I hope I can get one at some point and just see what they taste like. I caught them spawning in the little trucky once where I was catching one after another, but... It's all catch and release, zero bag limit in the little trucky. So, hopefully I can get something like that. Uh, the times I did get them, I had this hot pink power bait though. So, I don't know. I got my usual yellow stuff this time. 
But we'll see. You know, I, I went to go fish the inlet of the little Trekkie Naboka for Patreon yesterday, and it was a non-starter. So I went down to the main river and got a really nice cut bow. So that was, that was fine. So let's see how it goes. My first bite all day. I was just dozing off. Feels like a pretty good fish. It's almost two o'clock. I mean, I've been getting nothing. I'm getting a little tap and then nothing. Looks like a good rainbow. Man. Man. That's why I ran down and got the thing. I didn't even take the bell off. I didn't want to risk losing him. Ooh. I didn't even fish with, I even fished with a jig for like an hour. Cause I wasn't getting nothing. Man, I got him in about a 20 count. I fished every depth, everything, just nothing today. Good. One thing about those size 18 treble hooks I use, they're really sharp. This drag doesn't make sound, but it works. Glad I anchored those rods like I did. Cause that thing, <laughs> That thing, I was laying on my pad with under the umbrella. I just hope I got a good hook set. I don't want to lose this fish. I want to eat this fish. You gotta offset the gas with fish. Gas is so expensive right now. You almost need to expect a guy when your tank fills to kick you in the junk just to make sure the transaction was complete. Make sure you felt the pain. Oh, that's a good one. That is a good stampede rainbow right there. If I'm gonna get one fish, this is what I want. Okay, buddy. Okay. Cooperate. He's getting tired a little bit. He had some big runs, man. All day, it's just been like my bell would go dink, and that's it. And then I'd get up and I'd run over and I'd stand there like a dummy. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to go over there and get him because that's where he wants to go. And I don't want to. I'm gonna have to leave this. Let me do this. Okay, we're chest cam. I can't, I can't let filming make me lose this fish. There he is. It might even be a Lahant. Whatever it is, he's getting eaten. I went through too much today. Oh man, look at that fish. That's a nice. That is a nice fish. There he is. That is a good one. All right. Let's get in the water a little bit. This bank is so steep, there's nowhere to stand. 
Whew. He's probably in the corner of his mouth. I'm gonna have a real hard time not letting this fish go if I get him in the net. If I barely got him. Because this fish put up such a good fight, got him. Whew. That's a big Lahontan. And look at where I had him hooked. Look at that. Right there. There's the hook. See his cutthroat? I'm gonna let this guy rest. I'm gonna let this fish go, man. That was a long fight. This isn't like a river where you really gotta worry about these guys. But I'm gonna let him rest for a little bit and then I'm gonna hold him up. This fish is easily over 20 inches. I just barely got him, man, and he's just such a big fish and he's just, uh, he put up such a good fight. He just couldn't pass up that power bait original recipe. There he is. I mean, I just barely had him. So that's pretty much what happens. What happens with these size 18 treble hooks and why it's, they're so good, they're super sharp, but when the fish hits it and runs, it gets caught in the corner of their mouth of the last thing that the fish has to, to catch it. It hooks into that corner of their mouth. And this is a beautiful fish. I'm gonna hold him up. As he's just, he's gotta rest. I really fought this trout. All right, I let him sit in here for like five minutes, man. <laughs> I gotta go home at some point. But I'm gonna hold him up. Let someone else catch this fish. Check out that Lahontan. That's a beautiful Lahontan cutthroat. Look how nice he is. Get him back in the water. There he goes. Look at him. Straight back in. Got some real beautiful views out here today. But I'm gonna need to wrap this one up. And it's just, it's just beautiful. It's a little warm for my liking, but I'm into it. And to put it into perspective, here's the size 18 treble hooks I use. And they're razor sharp. And I learned this in Lake Tahoe mostly. When big trout hit that tiny ball of power bait and they run, it just, it catches the outside of their mouth. That's why I'm able to let so many fish go. And that's why I'm sold on these things for bigger fish. But man, I wasn't getting nothing, nothing. I fish, I was fishing 40 count, 10 count, 7 count, 20 count. That fish came at the 20 count. And all day, I was just getting the the slightest, like my line would, I, I keep a slack line because I have a slip sinker. And a lot of times I'll see the line swimming out before it even hits my rod. And a couple times I saw my line go out and then just stop. The fish would go away. And then the same thing, I get like a little hit on my bell. Ding! And that's it. That's it. And I battled that fish, man. That This is the first time I've had to throw on my chest mount because I just had it sitting on a rock because it's so steep right there where I am. There's nowhere to put a tripod or anything. So I set it on a rock up there. But then that fish was swimming down the bank, so I had to throw the chest cam on mid-battle, which is the first for me, and I got a lot of clips. So, I broke up the no-hitter, the skunk, at the last minute. It's 2, it's 2.15. I was going to leave at 3, and I wasn't getting anything, and I thought I was just going to get skunked. This was great. It's been a beautiful day out here, and now that I got a fish, I'm not disappointed. I hope you enjoyed me watching me battle that monster. That was a good time. And, you know, I could have gotten three meals easy off of that big trout. But the hook was like literally like sticking out of the corner of his mouth. And that fish put up such a good fight. He came to the game to play. I played the game. We're able to part ways as friends. Let's just say that, and that's cool, man. We both put up a good fight. We'll just we'll just call it even, and, and we'll, maybe I'll meet him another day, and we'll have another second round on that one. So I hope you enjoyed this beautiful time out of that Stampede Reservoir. That fish sure made my day. Thank you for joining me on Wilderness with Imani. Until next time.